Earlier today, I spoke to Herbert Metzger from Germany, who is one of the newest drivers to join Lotus Cup Europe. Can you tell us a little bit how you enjoy your first race season racing with us? Yeah, it was just great. In the beginning, it was a, a bit of hot heartbeat at the start, standing start, you know, Grand Prix starts. And but if you've done that once or twice, you get used to it, and, and then it's really a big, big pleasure and a great fun. For a new newbie, you're actually quite competitive. Can you tell us a bit more about how you're getting on? I'm happy to be here. Um, I'm learning a lot. I learned a lot this year. Uh, will be better every race. Um, just find the limit of the car and, and they help me. So it's not because you've spent a lot of money on your car making it better, it is because you just drive better. No, I bought the car and um, you, you don't have to spend any money, you, you need fuel and uh, tires, but that's all, a helmet you have to buy to, to, to be here and um, then you can start. Have you got any advice for other car enthusiasts that would like to start racing? Yes, um, they, they, should, they should have their car here and try and have some lessons and then, then they will improve their lap times and it will be better and better and the car is good, you, you don't have to change something. Um, they, there are a lot of people who want to sell you something but it's just not necessary in the beginning. You, you, can, you can drive this car very fast. So you'll be back next year? Yes, of course, I will be there. Good luck and thank you. Thank you. Bye. We're here for the second race. Typical Belgium weather, yesterday was wet. Today the conditions are a lot better. Bright and sunny day. Well, yeah, exactly what the drivers wanted. The opportunity to race at Spa in perfect sunny conditions. On pole position, we've got Mark Speller alongside him, John Walker, who will be looking to rectify that race one retirement. Rizzio Fortina, third on the grid, with Roman Rotaro in fourth position. Well, Pete Story and Tom Chataway, they had busy race ones, as did Matteo Castiglione, who lines up in 15th, just ahead of Dennis Van den Sarvel. Enormous field as ever. Philippe Loop, a little bit lower down than we'd expect to see in 25th position. The same possibly goes for Glenn Sherwood as well in 24th. Ken Savage well up in 27th place. Rob Austin went well in race one. He lines up in 34th position just ahead of Kai Kederholm, one of the invitation class runners. Paul McNeely, also good qualifying from him in terms of the production class to line up in 41st place with James Barkley and the ever-improving Martin Roberts in 43rd position. 53 cars taking the start of this one with Eve Kuriman rounding out the field as the green flags waved at the rear of the pack. It's a standing start this time around. 53 cars charging up to the source. This is going to be fun. The revs begin to rise. Away we go. And it's a good start from Mark Spiller. Everybody, I think, cleanly away as they fan out six or seven abreast in the midfield. The front Rizzio Fortina is being passed every which way by Lotus to 11s, but it's Speller leading through the source the first time with John Walker in second position and then third place I think is going the way of Roma Rotro. we will see as they make their way down towards Eau Rouge first time that's exactly how it is with Christophe Lezondre in fourth Steve Williams in fifth and Mark Fullerlove in sixth place with Laurent Febvre coming through in seventh Eau Rouge fantastic corner this one as Pete Story and Tom Chataway go side by side very busy as we can see in code Maurizio Fortina, everybody safely through Eau Rouge for the first time of asking. Well, up towards Le Com they go, and it's Mark Speller who is picking up exactly where he left off from race one in the lead and pulling away from John Walker, Roman Rotro, and the rest. Good to see Christophe Lissandra having uh, no hesitations going through Le Com following his race one indiscretion in car with Maurizio Fortina. He is right on the tail of the number 46 car, that's Dennis Van den Sarvel. Van den Sarvel in the bright orange exige is in turn looking to gain positions, which shows just what a poor start that Maurizio made because he is well down in the lower reach of the top 10 as the leading, well, seven cars, all these Lotus to 11s, all running really in a continuous train because Mark Speller is not pulling away from the man in second place, John Walker, and John Walker has got attached to his rear bumper like a limpet, Romain Rotro. And then there's a slight gap back to Christophe Lezondre. We've got this train of the leading exiges in car with Rizzio Fortina as he closes in on Dennis Van den Sarvel. I think it's Matteo Castiglione. It is who is just ahead of Van den Sarvel as they all constantly up under braking. We go wide with Fortina. I suspect that Van den Sarvel and Castiglione got rather intimate. Well, they did, but it's still Castiglione who's just got the advantage over Dennis Van den Sarvel. 
as Mark Speller has slipped down in second place. So it's John Walker who has inherited and taken the lead of the race from Mark Speller who runs wide as he exits. Bonchimort now, is that going to give an opportunity possibly to Roman Rotro instead? Speller almost, well, he does make contact a couple of times with John Walker as they go through the bus stop chicane, but Speller in some form of karma, who loses out because he actually loses the place. So we go in car with Olivier Kunat. Good afternoon to Gregory Rass in the white exige. We get very close to as Steve Williams is now up into fourth place, although Christophe Lezondre is disputing that into the source every which way you look at the moment in this fantastic race there are battles going on for pretty much every position uh, most certainly that is the case for the lead because we've got John Walker who has still got Romain Rotro right into the slight gap back to Mark Speller and then Steve Williams trying to be the bravest of the brave and challenge Christophe Lezondre as they go through Eau Rouge and taking slightly contrasting lines what it means is that it looks like Williams is trying to find a way through but he just can't in cart with Olivier Cunat as we see Gregory Rass just beginning to pull away in the distance. John Walker having to go defensive as they head up towards Lecom. Does that mean that Roman Rotro is going to draw alongside? Yes, it does. But Walker's got the inside line. I don't think Rotro is going to be able to drive around the outside. Steve Williams looking to the inside of Christophe Lissandre. It's mainly actually to keep Mark for the love at bay. As the Rasses continue their tussle just ahead of Olivier Cunat. Olivier Cunat clipping the kerb. No problem in terms of his racing line. But you can just see that Gregory Rass is with every corner moving away from him despite the fact that he is in a titanic scrap for position. Well, the leading trio are much closer once more because Mark Speller seems to have regrouped and is now very close on the tail of Romain Rotro as they make their way into these double left handers and Rotro in turn is challenging John Walker. We've got the three leaders covered by about four car lengths as they make their way safely through and Rotro really trying to do everything that he can to wrestle lead away from John Walker in car with Olivier Cunat as Laurent Feb holds up hold up but defends from John and Gregory Rass who are leading siege class and almost overlapping this is an absolutely superb scrap as Gregory looks at the side of John it's a bit of a slide as there's some dust in the distance now who's that who's gone off it's Roma Rotro Rotro has gone off from what was second position, he was challenging for the lead. So Roman Rotro is going to slip a long way down the order. And it means that Mark Speller is now able to have an unrestricted attack on John Walker for the lead of the race. We have still got Christophe Lissandre. I was going to say busy dice with Steve Williams, but Williams has run wide. So it's Mark Fullerlove who gains the position. So Mark Fullerlove it is, who is now up into fourth place. Steve Williams demoted into fifth. Christophe Lissandre remaining in third place and the Sondra getting a good exit from the bus stop chicane as well so I'm not sure there's going to be anything that Fuller Love can do this time around as they challenge each other on the run towards La Source no there's not Fuller Love holding the inside line mainly to keep the ever feisty Steve Williams at bay Williams trying to take the title line mainly to get the run down past the GT pits has running very wide there is Olivier Cunat and it means that Pete Storey is now promoted to join the fight on the tail of the Rasses as Steve Williams, well, he's going to achieve the dream. He's going to make the move somehow through Rouge, or is he? No, despite putting all four wheels on the grass on the entry to Eau Rouge, Fuller Love keeps his foot in and just holds the racing line as John Rass continues to keep Gregory Rass at bay. Well, excellent scrap still for the lead because John Walker has got Mark Speller on his tail. And this camera shot at driver eye line level, you can see Mark Speller's eyes behind the visor looking to Lecom, trying to find his way past John Walker, Laurent Fev busy defending from the Rasses who are once more side by side but once more it is still John Rass who keeps Gregory Rass behind him. He's laid it down the hill, that's away yellow flag and is that the safety car board going out? It is, so we've got a safety car coming out so all of those battles are going to have to be put on temporary hiatus and any gaps such as they were are going to be closed up to very little although to be honest we have had such a close race that um, it's not as if anybody's giving away a 10 second advantage here it's more a case of giving away a four tenth of a second advantage certainly a case of the race leaders so the 52 remaining cars all beginning to form up in a long line behind the safety car and uh, with such a long queue it's going to be a little bit challenging possibly for some of the drivers to manage their pace against the cars in front particularly as the early autumn sun just beginning to dip now and glisten off the top of this wonderful field in the Lotus Cup Europe as so they make their way around the Spa circuit so 
The midfield cars just beginning to fan out ever so slightly. As you can see, plenty of bobbing and weaving going on. A little bit for track positions. Jose Vazlak gets it all wrong. And he makes contact with Martin Roberts. And Roberts into the barriers. Oh, that's an absolute disaster. Martin Roberts lurches back on through the circuit. We've also got somebody, I think that's Willem, Jan van der Koe, who has also suffered. And that was Jose Vazla just got his braking all wrong. And it's Vazla who looks like he's going to be the driver who's going to recover. Because Martin Roberts, you can see that his right rear wheel is pointing in a completely different direction to the other three. So Martin Roberts out of the race. The crowd watch on in, um, I think, amusement as much as anything as the safety car has pulled in. And we're about to get racing underway once more here in the second race of the weekend from the Lotus Cup Europe. Out of the bus stop chicane goes John Walker pulling away from Mark Spether than Christophe Lissandra still in that third place. Although Steve Williams hoping to get a good restart and challenge Lissandra as they make their way on towards the source. It's Lissandra to the inside. Williams to the outside, Steve Williams then jinks back to the inside, Christophe de Sondre having absolutely none of that. So he maintains third place, Mark for Love in fifth place, watching that battle unfolding ahead of him as they make their way down to Eau Rouge once more. It's been a good restart from John Walker, he's pulling away from Mark Speller. Speller in turn pulling away from the Sondre. Then we've got Fuller Love as well, busy defending from Laurent Febvre. Steve Williams, who he's not the man on the move, he's certainly the man who's looking the most aggressive at the moment as on to the Kemmel straight they come and this really is an opportunity for the drivers to just go as quickly as they can now Steve Williams had a slight problem possibly on the exit of Eau Rouge because it may be that he's dropped behind Mark Fuller Love yes he has so it's Lissandra who is there in third position then I think everybody else in fourth it is Fuller Love who goes through in fourth Laurent Febvre in fifth and then Steve Williams next man through in sixth we go in car with Laurent Febvre as he makes his way through Le Com. And Fev, well, it looks relatively calm in the cockpit, but when we next go outside the car, we'll see what a frantic tussle he's in. As we make our way down the hill to the right-hander, the leading duo continue a pace at the head of the field. Yes, there is Laurent Fev, and you can see that he is homing in on the tail of Mark Fullove, and he's busy defending from Steve Williams as well. The Rasses continue to tussle for honours in the Exige class battle. Well, I'm not sure what happened to Steve Williams there, but something obviously went wrong at the top of Eau Rouge because he lost two positions by the time they arrived at Le Com. Will he be able to regain them? That is the key question of the main laps of the race. We go in car with Maurizio Cortina. He is still behind Tom Chateau. He's going to be able to find his way through very shortly. Well, we'll find out because we're about to go for a break. We'll be back in a couple of moments' time with more action from the Lotus Cup Europe at Spa.